All right, ladies, I want to talk with those of you who are dealing with menopausal symptoms and share five herbs that can help you while you're going through this natural life change. Menopausal symptoms include irregular periods and changes in hormone levels, which can lead to changes in mood, frequent irritability, frustration, and even anger. Women going through menopause also experience vaginal dryness, sore and tender breast, thinning hair, bloating, weight gain, and most well-known of all symptoms are the dreaded hot flashes and night sweats. So are you going through menopause or have you been through menopause? I know that this is a very personal and sensitive topic, but I'd really like your feedback. I'm going to cover five herbs, but there are many herbs or herbal combinations that women have used to help relieve menopausal symptoms for eons. Um, so if something has worked for you, could you drop a comment uh, below? Let me know. Are you going through menopause? Have you been through menopause? What, were, what was your experience like? And what herbs or herbal remedies? Maybe you tried a homeopathic remedy. What did you do? What did you use to help you get through that? Share with us what were your worst symptoms? What did you struggle with the most? Tell us, did you try one or two herbs or several options? What worked for you? Go ahead and give me that feedback because we want to help one another. That's the whole point, helping one another get through these things. So just because these symptoms are often associated with the change in our lives, it doesn't mean we have to suffer through with these symptoms. So I want to share with you some herbal options that can help alleviate these symptoms. So now I could talk about this all day. I could talk about food and nutrition and basics of health. In fact, I teach classes on that. So you can visit my website at sweeturbanliving.com and you can see I teach herbology and iridology and other traditional natural health classes. And these are the kinds of things we address. But today I really want to talk about herbs and how they can help support the body. So let's get back to that and how herbs help us go through the process with grace, so to speak. So herbs are great for filling the gaps when needed, okay? We don't want to rely on herbs as far as thinking of herbs as, well, if I take this, I can live however I want to live. I can eat the crap. I can not worry about exercising. I don't have to worry about how much water I'm drinking. No, that's not what I'm saying. Herbs help, but we still have to have a strong foundation. But while you're working on your foundation and getting out and exercising and drinking plenty of water and eating good, healthy food, make sure that you're taking supplements because they kind of, they help. They, they're supplemental and they're there for your benefit. Make sure you're getting good proteins, plenty of fruits and veggies, and get rid of processed and packaged foods because they aren't doing you any favors, especially during menopause. So which herbs bring balance to you? Not every herb works for every woman. An herb that works for me may not do anything for you. Now remember, I had an herb shop, so I had all kinds of herbs on my herb shelf that I could go to and choose, and I tried several of them, and they just didn't seem to work. So don't be afraid to say, that herb didn't work for me, let me try another one. That's what I had to do. The hot flashes and the night sweats were horrible. And what I experienced wasn't really as bad as what I've seen other women experience. In fact, comparatively speaking, they were mild. Okay, now before I share what worked for me, let me share a few other herbs that are traditionally and historically used to help women going through menopause. And they do work. I had a lot of customers who use these herbs. So try them out. The first herb I want to recommend is wild yam. Many people tout wild yam as having chemical constituents that convert to progesterone in the body, but that's not quite true. The chemical compounds in wild yam don't have a progesterone-like effect on the body, but wild yam is considered an anti-inflammatory herb. It helps with hot flashes because it's cooling and relaxing. Wild yam contains a chemical called diostenine. This chemical is considered a phytosteroid and seems to have an estrogen effect on the body. 
This can help with vaginal itching and dryness and can help make intercourse more comfortable. Wild yam is also an antispasmodic herb that helps relieve cramping and other menstrual irregularities. Next on our list, number two, is chase tree berry, sometimes called by its Latin name vitex or vitex. So chase tree is a hormone regulator, where wild yam is a cooling and relaxing herb, chase tree is a warming and drying herb. More importantly, vitex brings balance to hormones and normalizes the body. It is well known to help women through many phases of reproductive health, including restoring fertility and aiding with PMS symptoms. And it is also very beneficial for easing women through the fluctuations and changes experienced during menopause. Bonus tip, try wild yam and chase tree together. These two herbs blended together work synergistically in bringing balance to women going through many kinds of menstrual irregularities, including menopause. If you've tried one or the other of these two herbs and you felt some relief, but maybe not quite enough, give the combination a try. I'll drop a link in the comments below to the Herbal Blend by Nature Sunshine products. Many of my herbal customers loved this combination. Number three, Evening primrose oil is an oily herb that is often used by women to support female health issues. Some women experience a reduction of hot flashes and night sweats when taking evening primrose oil, while some only experience a reduction in night sweats. So you might experience a reduction of both hot flashes and night sweats, or it may only help you with the night sweats. But evening primrose oil can help reduce the frequency and severity of hot flashes and night sweats. Because it's high in omega-6 fatty acids and gamma-linolic acid, evening primrose oil should be considered as part of your herbal regimen if you experience tenderness or pain in the breast, joint discomfort or stiffness, as well as mood and irritation issues. Herb number four. Black cohosh. Black cohosh is often recommended for women during menopause. In fact, it's probably one of the first herbs that women turn to when experiencing menopausal symptoms. Many women benefit from this herb due to its cooling and relaxing effects on the body and the nervous system, helping with irregular pains during PMS as well as during menopause. It's also known to help with moods and is considered an herbal antidepressant and is recommended for those dealing with dark, gloomy emotions. Now, black cohosh can also help lower blood pressure that's elevated. It can help reduce inflammation and pain in the joints, and it is a good remedy believe it or not, for stings and bites. In fact, Native Americans use black cohosh not only for women's health issues, they also used it when there were cases of snake bites. But there is a word of caution I want to share with you. While we're talking about menopause, black cohosh can be used to help women with other reproductive health issues, including uterine pain, painful periods, uh, severe cramping, and other uh, muscular pains but black cohosh can increase uterine action. So it should not, it should not be taken during the first trimester of pregnancy, but it can be helpful during the last weeks of pregnancy or during labor. In fact, many women use it to help get labor moving because of its effect on the uterus. So use it with caution. Number five and the herb that worked for me, da 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 da, is sage. Now, sage may not be the first herb herbalists think about when helping women through menopause, but it certainly has a place on my herb shelf. Sage has many herbal actions, one of which is a nervine. Because it helps soothe and strengthen the nervous system, sage builds our capacity to handle stress. Now, while it's a warming and drying herb, it also helps alleviate night sweats. In fact, Profuse sweating is one of the primary indicators for using sage. Not just night sweats in women, but anyone who has profuse sweating should check out sage. Sage has astringent qualities that help with both hot flashes and night sweats. And in one study, sage was found to decrease mild causes of hot flashes by 46% while helping alleviate 
severe to very severe cases of hot flashes by 79 to 100%. Sage is also high in vitamin K, which is beneficial for those women who experience heavy bleeding during menopausal transition. Vitamin K aids in the clotting of blood, and this is needed for those experiencing heavy blood flow during periods. Going through menopause can be very stressful for many women, which means we release more cortisol. When cortisol levels stay active, inflammation increases. When inflammation increases, we experience weight gain and pain. Inflammation can also contribute to vaginal dryness and more hot flashes. The anti-inflammatory properties of sage can help ease these effects on the body during menopause. Sage is also used for helping with memory and is even recommended for those dealing with dementia and Alzheimer's. It helps balance blood sugar levels, which can also help those who are dealing with weight control issues and want to lose weight, but they just keep packing it on because they're experiencing all this stress and all these other symptoms. So sage is number one in my book. It's what worked for me. Another caution though I have to give about sage is that while sage is highly beneficial for many health issues and it is often used to help with sore throat and fevers, coughs, digestive issues, lowering blood pressure, helping with memory and focus and more, it should be avoided in nursing women because it is known to dry the flow of milk. Many herbalists also recommend avoiding sage during pregnancy as well. We are talking about therapeutic uses here. We're not talking about culinary. If you have sage in your food, we're not talking about that. The amount of sage used in food doesn't seem to affect milk production, according to herbalist Phil Fritchie in his book, Practical Herbalism. Let's talk about some keys to health that we should all practice. It's important that we have strong foundations, strong health foundations in place to help support our bodies and our hormones as we go through this phase and transition in life. So first and foremost, I want to talk about water. Are you drinking half your body weight in ounces of water every day? That is a good recommendation. That's a great equation. You don't have to know how much somebody weighs. You don't have to share how much you weigh, but it makes sure your body is hydrated so that the, you can do all the things that you need to do. So are you drinking tea? Now, if you're t drinking herbal tea, I'm not including this in the list of no-nos because herbal teas can be very beneficial. But if you're drinking what we call sweet tea or unsweetened tea, uh, if you're drinking Cokes and sodas, diet drinks, coffee, wine, or beer. These other beverages don't hydrate the body properly. In fact, some of them dehydrate the body and some can cause more harm to our bodies because they contain neurotoxins. Anything that has artificial sweeteners in it is a no-no on my list. So we need to eliminate Cokes and sodas and diet drinks. And depending on how much you are drinking, you may want to cut down uh, or maybe even eliminate altogether uh, coffee and alcohol. In fact, alcohol can have an adverse effect when you're going through menopause because it increases some of the symptoms. Another healthy foundation we want to incorporate into our lives is getting plenty of good sunshine and fresh air every day. Are you getting out each day and letting the sun kiss your skin? Are you taking walks in the fresh air, breathing in the fresh air? Now, yes, too much sun can be harmful to our skin. That's true. But we do need the sun on our skin for about 20 minutes each day so that our bodies can create vitamin D. Not only do we need vitamin D for a healthy immune system, but we also need vitamin D for hormone conversion in the body. Vitamin D is also known to help with low mood and weight gain, two symptoms often experienced during menopause with those going through menopause. Okay, let's talk about sleep. Are you getting a good night's sleep? Many women struggle to get a good refreshing night's sleep when going through menopause. That's because our bodies are no longer producing as much progesterone as they did before. And progesterone along with melatonin helps us to get a good night's sleep. Not only that, a lot of women experience 
night sweats. So that interrupts sleep as well. You wake up either hot and sweating, moving the covers off of you. So you're getting interrupted sleep instead of uninterrupted sleep. So when hot flashes are experienced at night, we refer to them as night sweats. Night sweats occur when estrogen and progesterone levels begin to decrease. And speaking from experience, these are horrible. I hate it having hot flashes and night sweats. I find night sweats to be much worse than hot flashes. Um, the hot flashes were bad, the night sweats were worse. With night sweats, many women are in what we call a catch-22. It does, it's like you can't get a good night's sleep because you're dealing with hot flashes, but you need to get a good night's sleep to help regulate your body's hormones. So we need to get balance in our sleep. We need to bring balance to our home hormones so that we can get a good night's sleep. So now we're back to talking about water and alcohol. Alcohol can cause an increase in hot flashes and night sweats. So be sure you're getting the right amount of water, which is half your body weight in ounces of water each day. And you're not drinking alcohol, which causes the body to heat up and attributes to having more hot flashes and night sweats. Another health foundation we want to talk about is exercise. Now, Exercise requirements for menopausal women are different from younger women and definitely different from what men need. Many menopausal women work out and still experience weight gain. And then what happens is because when we were younger, if we worked out harder or longer or more intensely, um, we would lose the weight. That's the idea we bring with us as we start to go through menopause. So we work out longer, we work out harder, we add more reps. And that's actually counterintuitive for us as we're going through menopause or once we're past and we're no longer experiencing that. We still need to be careful because when we do that, we actually increase stress on our bodies. So some women will work out harder, but other women, they'll start to gain weight and they're like, I might as well just eat the Oreos. I might as well just do whatever because I'm going to gain weight anyway. Working out doesn't help. And so I might as well just, you know, give up. But don't give up. Exercise is very helpful for us during and after menopause. It helps build strong bones. It decreases anxiety and stress levels. And it helps us sleep. Consider doing Pilates and stretching, things that are more gentle on the body and don't increase stress. So what has worked for me is exercising three times per day for 10 minutes at a time rather than working out hard for 30 minutes altogether. When I do a 30 minute workout, I notice I gain more weight. But when I break it up and I do 10 minutes like morning, mid-afternoon, later afternoon, during my work day. And as you can see, I work a lot from home, so I get to do that. But when I break it up, it's not as stressful on my body and my body responds and releases weight. Now, when I walk, I do walk. When I go out and do an, a walk for my exercise, I do walk for 30 minutes at a time, maybe 45 minutes, even an hour. That's not so much the problem, it's those intensive exercises that seem to cause us to gain weight. So I break up my exercises throughout the day, day and I'm still making my body stronger, but I'm not increasing the stress levels in my body, which can lead to added weight and bad feelings about myself. The next thing, of course, is we want to address our diet and nutrition. We want to cut the crap out of our diet. CRAP stands for chemicals, refined sugar, refined flours, and artificial ingredients, as well as harmful preservatives and food coloring. So carbonated sodas, here we're naming them again, uh, they're CRAP. Snacks that are made with hydrogenated oils or seed oils or things like that, they're CRAP. Heck, even some of our healthy snacks are CRAP. So if it's filled with refined sugar, high fructose corn syrup, additives, artificial sweeteners, and preservatives, then we want to get rid of them. Don't eat them. The fewer ingredients on your label, the better. So typically what we want to do is look for ingredients that we can pronounce because if you can pronounce it, you know what's in it. Now there are exceptions to that rule, but just think about it. 
you know you can pronounce most of the words that are real food. So crap foods really aren't foods. I call them not foods because they don't have the nutrition we need for strong, healthy bodies and for helping us to get through menopause with a strong hormone system. So there you have it. Five herbs plus helpful keys to health that can help you make it through menopause without the sweats, without the mood changes, without the irritability, without all the other issues associated with the changes of life. Mm -hmm.